Now, have you ever been interested in looking rich when you really just don't have the money to look that way? Well, we got you covered. Well, we definitely have you covered because for the for less than a brand new Toyota Camry, you can buy some of these vehicles, which will automatically make you look like you have over two hundred thousand dollars back in two thousand five, six years like that some of the cars we're going to tell you about today started at prices even over half a million dollars which pre you know foreshadows one of the cars on our list yeah. but yes you could buy some of these cars at 20 percent or even 10 percent of their original purchase price so let's get into the top five cars that are the cheapest that make you look the most rich i'm aiden and i'm evo you're watching god next <laughs> Now, our first one on the list, of course, and many of you probably could have guessed this, is going to be the first generation Bentley Continental GT. Yes. Now, I'm a part of a group on Facebook called 04 Rich, and that is the king of 04 Rich. I mean, over 200 grand new. Yep. Uh, now, probably 30, like 000. 30 grand. Yeah. If you look hard enough with high enough miles, yes. It was powered by a W12, which they've been using for the last 20 or so years it made over 400 horsepower got you to 60 miles an hour in the low four second range and it looks great and it looks basically the same up until about 2017 or 2018 yeah. when they finally refreshed the continental gt but yes you could get one of these british luxury supercars for next to the price of a base camry yeah now there's a reason that these cars are so cheap of course i mean over like a quarter of a million dollars new yes now you probably need to have that much in the bank to keep it running yes you know it looks great as a boat anchor on the side of your house but th there's a reason that these cars are cheap i mean the w12 well yes it makes a lot of power and it's a really cool engine it, you really you need to have the hands of a baby to be able to work on it because it's stuffed in there and you will need to work on it because what's that one issue that it has with uh lines or something to evo's point the engine bay was very tightly compacted together but behind the engine there were vacuum lines that continuously failed and dried out and cracked on the w12 motor so they basically have to pull the whole motor out just to replace those vacuum lines in the back of the engine bay so yes if you don't care about that though and you have a bunch of money and you want to look rich or at least want to look rich for a couple months before your car explodes please go get yourself a first generation bentley continental gt now for the next one, this is the W221 Mercedes S-Class, specifically the S600. Now, most people go and buy an S550, so it's more mundane. Right. But if you buy an S600, you get a twin-turbo V12, which new was in around the $200,000 mark, and now you can pick it up for like 15 grand. Oh yeah, 100%. And they have decently modern technology. It was made in the late 2000s, very early 2010s. And they look fine until something breaks. Yeah, so, so surprisingly, unlike the Bentley, the V12 is actually very reliable. It's one of the most reliable Mercedes engines ever built. Their Achilles heel is the uh, massive coil pack that they have because unlike other engines, it, you can't just replace one. You, you gotta, gotta replace, replace the, the whole thing, thing. And it's about 1,500 a piece. There's two. So that's the Achilles heel, but aside from that, it's pretty reliable. It's all the electronics that are the problem because, you know, almost 20 year old German electronics, depending on where you live in the heat, let's just say that you can, you know, spend a lot of money attempting to fix it and probably It'll never get fixed. No, but if you want to look rich. Yes, 600 is a good choice. It's a, yeah, it's a great car. Now let's move on to the third car. The Jaguar XKR. Now, Back to Britain. Now, it's hard to find some of these cars for less than $30,000, but if you do look hard enough, you can find an XKR coupe of the second generation that started about 09, and that's when they became good-looking cars. Before that, they were kind of weird-looking, and they shared a lot of their design language with the DB7, too. Yeah. The, yep. the DB7 and the first-generation XKR actually looked very, very similarly because they were both owned by Ford. Yep. <laughs> now, XKR that Aiden is talking about, supercharged V8, very, very luxurious interior. It's a good looking car too. And if you really want to epitomize being an attorney or a dentist in Malibu in 2009, you get an XKR. Um, yeah, you get a convertible XKR. And they could have cost, these things could have cost you over $120,000 new again, making over 400 horsepower. These things were quick for the time being. Now they're not super quick, but 
the biggest problem with the Jaguars, of course, back then was going to be the electronics because they yeah. still have electronics issues today. <laughs> of course. Mm. But, yeah, it's it, – honestly, in my opinion, I think it's one of the most prettiest Jaguars built in the last 20 years. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's right. a really pretty car. The problem is you're going to get bored and sick of looking at it when it's going to be broken constantly in your driveway. Um, but, yeah, if you want to look like you had money during the recession, yeah, let's move on to the fourth car. And now we're going to stick with Bentley. Britain and Bentley. As you notice, this is a trend of European vehicles. The Bentley Azure. Oh, my God. Now, what is the Bentley Azure, you may ask yourself? Well, it was right before Volkswagen really took over. And it's a convertible that Bentley built in the late 90s to the around mid-2000s. And it's a great-looking car. I love the Bentley Azure. Oh, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. This was like over 200 grand new. You had to be literally the queen of England to buy this car. Yes. And guess what it uses, why it's so problematic? It uses mineral oil as its hydraulic fluid for the suspension and the power steering. Is this the same generation as, like, the Arnaz and everything? Yes. Like <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. Yep. And the Rolls Royces of those. They had a 6.75 liter V8 that was turbocharged, which is horrendously unreliable. And, uh, yeah, basically you need to have an oil refinery in your backyard to keep this thing going. If you show up in one of those cars to an event in L.A. or something, people will look at you because they'll be like, they're either going to think, oh, it's a Bentley, or they're going to be like, if this guy or gal has a lot of money if this thing's still running. Yeah. Because you're going to need a lot of money. He must really running. like Bentleys. Yeah, you must love that car. Now, the last car on our list is going to hit home for a lot of you because everyone knows about this car. It's going to be the first generation, specifically the 2004 Rolls-Royce Phantom. Uh, and this car Phantom. holds a special place in my heart because it's made, of course, this was the generation of Phantom. The first generation of Phantom was the first car that BMW produced when they owned Rolls-Royce. Or no. I should rephrase that as Rolls Royce made it. That was their first car yep. when after BMW had bought them, and yep. it became a wild success of being one of the most luxurious cars you could ever buy, costing over four hundred thousand dollars new, using the latest BMW technology, engines and everything like that, the yep. best materials on the market. Now, I don't know about you guys, but telling my friends I have a Rolls Royce Phantom, not Ghost, not, not a Ghost. No, I don't know. You're not. You're <laughs> not, not a peasant. Ray. Oh no, a Phantom. You have a Phantom. <laughs> guys, this car is the size of a school. A school I mean, it's bus. bigger than a school bus. I mean, this thing's insane. They're around 20 feet long. They're insane. Two-story house. If you've ever been in one of these, it's one of the most comfortable cars ever. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, there's a reason it's dirt cheap is because... They have reliability issues. Well... Not as bad not as, as bad the as Bentleys the or yes, the old yes, other ones. Not one. as bad as the older Rolls Royces because BMW came in and they surprisingly fixed some other fixed stuff. Fixed a lot of problems. But um, the issue was if you really want to look like a rapper from the 2005 2006 era mtv cribs 24 inch asante <laughs> you get a, a rolls you royce get phantom. a 2004 rolls royce phantom but honestly out of all the cars on our list it's probably got to be the most reliable one out of all of them it is it's by far the most reliable one i mean the continental is not horrendous and the s-class they're they're, they're, they're fine manageable. it's just that you know they have their own issues which the phantom does too i mean it's a rolls royce at the end of the day but if you really want to look rich, I mean, the Phantom is the car. Like this, even nowadays, I mean, they start at 500 grand now. You yeah. Know, you can't just walk in and buy a Phantom. Right. You know, you special order them or whatever, but it's one of the craziest cars. It's, it's mind-boggling that you can spend 80 grand and buy a Phantom because you literally had to be a rapper or a movie star in 2004 or the Queen of England. But, but let us know if we missed any cars, because there's there's probably other ones out there. I mean, there's a bunch I could think of, like Mercedes SL. Those were very expensive. Yeah. Uh, CLs. But yeah, let us know down below what you guys think. These are just some of the five that we thought of that really make you look like you have not only money from back then, but money now to keep them going. Right. So let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.